Welcome to Spectrum Sundays. I am Megan Sinisi, a Master of Health Science candidate studying to practice as a pediatric speech language pathologist. I am also Miss Central Pennsylvania and the founder of a nonprofit organization for autism titled From a New Perspective. And I am Francesca D'Alessandro, a current master's student at University of Buffalo studying speech language pathology. Additionally, I am your Miss Thousand Islands of New York State, serving my community through AAA appreciation and awareness for autism. Everyone deserves to feel accepted and included in every space they walk in. Our series aims to inspire you to advocate for yourself and on behalf of your loved ones. And we are so grateful that you're here with us today. This week, we are excited to welcome Margaret Carpenter Dove, who is a candidate for Miss Connecticut 2021. In her year of service as Miss Greater Hamden, Margaret proudly represents the autistic community and advocates for disability awareness through her social impact initiative. She attends Vista Life Innovations Special Needs School where she studies vocational and life skills, and she serves as a student ambassador and trainee. Throughout her academic career and Miss America organization journey, she hopes to earn scholarships to further her education and to one day become a pageant choreographer. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being with us today. Mm. I'm happy to be with you, yes. We are really excited to connect with you and we're always very pleased to learn more about Miss America Sisters across the country. So we're very much looking forward to learning more about you. Mm. To get started, could you give us a brief overview of your background with autism spectrum disorders? Well, I have autism myself and in high school, I volunteered with Unified Sports for a couple games being like the first autistic person in my school to do that. So I volunteered with a field day and a, and a basketball game. I also volunteered with one big circle dance classes and um, spin classes in high school because I am passionate about dance and exercise. So I wanted to volunteer with that type of stuff with special needs. So I did that. I I'm autistic myself, so I, I didn't do much volunteer work with it. I did ASRC walks as volunteer walk things, but I got more interested in doing it after high school when I was at Vista Life Innovations, but I never got that opportunity. I did protected behaviors, but I never really got the answers I was looking for for volunteer work. But as someone with autism, I realized that adversity is hard and difficult to deal with, but you can always overcome it. it. Just takes double the effort when you have a disability because I had to learn how to tie my shoes in second grade and I didn't learn how to tie them until third grade. So I have to like learn at a slower pace. I didn't start walking or talking until I was three. So it took me a long time to learn things, you know. Yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. We're interested in Spectrum Sundays to learn more perspectives from people who have autism themselves and to share their story. So we're really happy that you're here to share that with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just as a follow-up question, we like to ask anyone who comes on our series who has a diagnosis of autism, if they identify with uh, autism as identity first or person first. So that would be um, autistic or person with autism. Do you have a preference as we go on through this conversation? Um, I don't really like have a preference. I'm used to both. You know what I mean? Okay. I don't really know like how I, I have no idea. I'm have autism, but I also do like, I know person with autism more appropriate, but people call me autistic anyways. And I laugh it off as a joke. So I don't care either way. I think you know I what heard I mean? I think I heard you refer to yourself as autistic a few times before this conversation. And then I think I also heard you use person with autism. So is it okay if I switch back and forth? Yes. Okay. I'm just saying, I don't really have a preference. I know it sounds weird. No, that's not weird at all. We just like to ask out of respect and because we know that a lot of people have different opinions about it or feel strongly one way or the other. So we just like to ask so that we're- I just don't like when people refer to certain things as stimming because I don't really, it's not that I stim, it's just I'm more energetic. So I don't really like using it as stimming because it's a way I like you, because 
reason why I do it is because either I'm nervous or bored, so I just channel it into stuff, you know. I don't like, that's the one term I hate is stimming, not autistic or person with autism. I hate when people use the word stimming, you know what I mean? It just annoys me because I don't, certain people can't help it. Some people are just energetic, you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's a topic that we've talked about before on our series as well. So hopefully maybe you'll find some more information about that and some other perspectives too you can relate to. Yeah. So I want to get to know about your participation in the Miss America organization and what inspired you to start competing because I believe you said earlier that this is your first year. Yeah. Yeah. So what has inspired you to compete and to participate? Well, what first inspired me to participate was basically is difficult to say because basically I wasn't in a pageant family growing up, but I had a former friend who used to really love pageants, but we didn't get along that well. And I was like, do I really want to do pageants? Is that just her thing? But I kept looking at pageants and I'm like, shoot, should I do the Miss USA universe system? Should I do the Miss America system? Or is, or, or is that not my thing? Because I was confused. All of a sudden, I received this Miss Kinetics USA invitation. I applied, but then I realized it don't quite meet the requirements yet, but I nailed the interview, and I'm like, maybe I should try another pageant. So I tried this pageant on a whim, like just on a random whim, and then I'm like, geez, this actually might be the stepping stone to do that pageant and do both pageants. And then I realized, wait, this is something I desire to do as a job. As soon as I started applying that type of stuff, it interests me in pageant choreography as I started to like um, get used to um, realizing that it was something I'd enjoy just from watching pageants. And then after realizing, wait a minute, this might be more my thing. And then at the end of my friendship with this person I wasn't getting along with, she said, we're still friends in the, even if we're no longer communicating, I hope you try doing pageants. And I'm like, maybe I should try doing pageants, even though it didn't go so well to the friendship. I went after them myself, realizing they were for me. And that was the one good piece of advice she told me was to go for it. <laughs> Yeah, I know it sounds awkward, but like sometimes the ending of a chapter can like bring the start of a chapter. Isn't that weird? Yeah, absolutely. When one door closes, another one opens. And we're really glad to hear that you pursued that. And you took some time to figure out, you know, if this was for you. And, and now you're getting a chance to really explore it even more. Yeah, and the system I'm doing is the one my former friend did. And I thought, wait a minute, I don't want to do the same one as her. And then I realized, wait a minute, it's actually more my thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so one of the really unique and awesome opportunities that we have as title holders is that we get to promote a social impact initiative. We get to speak and act on our passions. So what are some of your goals and things that you hope to accomplish through your own social impact initiative? I'm hoping that I'll be able to help people with disabilities have equal opportunities to achieve their ambitions and do leadership roles but also people be aware that people with disabilities have equal rights to and deserve to have rights of having their choices of what they desire to do with their lives, you know, through different ways of putting themselves in involvement. So when I get involved with organizations, I'd hope to like mentor them and like work with them and volunteer with them so that they can sort of work like as a team, as as a whole or as in individual ways, depending on the organization I'm working with, so that it prepped them to get to a normal level by helping them. Because that's what I did when I was in high school with disability organizations towards the end of my high school, because I had a disability. I didn't like being talked down to when I was younger. So I try to change that in my school towards the end of my years. And that's why I'm hoping to do that while I'm here at my school and now I'm part of Miss America organization because at my old school I used to do that a lot and I'd like to continue doing that in my new school you know and outside of it in my Hamden community and in the school and that I am in at Westbrook you know yeah that's great I think that is 
one of the hardest but most important things to do as an advocate is to help shape and change the attitudes and perspectives of, of other people, especially in a more positive light. And it sounds like you've certainly been working towards that and doing a great job at it. Um, so I wanted to know what some of the most valuable lessons that you've learned through your experience um, advocating for disability and autism awareness were. What I've learned, um, I've learned like to treat people equally based on my own experiences and trying to help other people not experience that, you know, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to do the same um, um, during this time of being MAO title holder because I've only done it before I was a title holder. I haven't really gotten involved at, at the moment, but I would like to get more involved because I wasn't involved this time, but I was in the past and I'm hoping to start working with more organizations. Um, I have been invited to do this um, like autism um, organization nonprofit by this Virginia contestant. I'm hoping to do that as well as I'm hoping to um, basically do the Rotary Club that I'm doing with my school, the Rotary thing that I've been invited to. Hopefully that happens soon. Um, and there's other organizations I tried reaching out to, such as Best Buys and Special Olympics. They didn't quite answer. It was kind of awkward. You know what I mean? And I had like a long list I was trying to reach out to. It didn't work. But hopefully things will work out. Some people will reach out to me, you know. Right. I'm involved with the Special Olympics Pennsylvania chapter. And I know that they're always looking for more advocates and more representatives and ambassadors to speak on behalf of their program. So I hope that that works out for you too. And as hopefully we're on the rise yeah. of better times with COVID, then things can be held in person more. And I'd love to like volunteer with like soccer, floor hockey, or dance because those are like sports I'm good at. I was good at floor hockey in, 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 in high school. And at FIST, I did dance and soccer. So, like, if I could volunteer with some of those, that would be great, you know? Yes. That would be so, I used, yeah, that would, because I used to be an athlete because I was special needs, like, with gymnastics, but I wasn't too good at that. I enjoyed it, but I was more athlete level, and then I became recreational. But, like, with sports that I've done recreationally without even doing, um, special needs stuff, I, I found those interesting. So I was wondering like with the sports I'm naturally good at and enjoy, could I be a volunteer despite my autism? I have no idea, but I hope. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Something I wanted to pick your brain about a little bit, Margaret, is how you think that, or something that you think people misunderstand about autism and how you would want to clarify that. Um, or help people better understand about autism? What I'd like to help people understand better is that it's not about vaccines actually, because vaccines don't affect you really. It's more so if you're born with it, because it's a mutation and people are born with mutations. A lot of people who have autism have older parents. My parents had to have me as an older parent because I was an egg donor child. So they had me at a later age, causing me to have autism. And I couldn't be born unless I had autism, basically, you know, because my parents had egg donor and then they had me at an older age. And I have half siblings. I have no idea who my half siblings are, but I've got feelings about who's related to me. And it turns out one of my friends was actually related to me and I had a gut feeling about it and I was right. <laughs> oh, wow. You had an I know it sounds weird, but like legit, if you have a diagnosis, you're aware of who else has a diagnosis, who's related to you. Because basically you're like, well, if they're that similar, you know, and like, my egg donor process was crazy and a lot of people on my family tree were adopted or something. It's crazy, you know. Wow, <laughs> that's a really interesting story. And, you know, I think that is on the topic of vaccines. I think that is a really important topic to hit, especially in this age of misinformation. It's really important to for our audience to be educated on what the causes of autism are so that we're not totally misguided when going uh, a lot of times yeah. when 
parents receive that newer diagnosis. The only think- one I'm aware of is birth, like mutation is the one I'm aware of, like mutation during birth because of older parents. That's what happened to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of times uh, the person will be just born with autism because of the genetic mutation. So that was a great clarification for our viewers. Thank you. Um, so we are, so Megan and I are not diagnosed with autism, but we still advocate for the community, whereas you are a self-advocate. So do you think it's important for people with autism to advocate for them, advocate for themselves? Yeah, I think so, definitely, because if you want to, like, go after your desires and don't listen to what they say, like, if you're capable of, like, being self-aware, then you should be capable of advocating, like, if you're aware of yourself, you know? Absolutely. Yes, we've talked to quite a few self-advocates who share that that similar sentiment that, you know, nothing about us without us. No one else knows our experiences unless we are speaking up about, you know, what, what we experience ourselves and how, helping educate the community from a direct voice. So tell us about a time that you may have advocated for yourself in your personal needs. Um, I have a kid. Um when I um, basically um, multiple times in my life, like countless, I have advocated when I um, wanted to do normal classes in school, you know, when I was in high school. I want to do certain normal classes, extracurriculars, you name it, a lot of different things that advocate more for in high school. Whereas in my transition program, special needs school, I had to advocate but not as much because I'm more of a role model here because we're all special needs and I've sort of been more outspoken whereas in high school I'd hide more but I still like in the beginning but then I ended up being more of an advocate and more outspoken in the end I mean both I was definitely an advocate and outspoken just high school was more like normal people too but still both were good experiences just The problem was that I was more, um, how do I explain it, exposed to people who would like um, not understand because they'd have like special needs teachers that would um, manipulate a bit. Whereas in the transition program, there may be people like that, but there's always people that will back you up and say, you don't have to date this person. You don't have to do this. Whereas like high school, it'd be kind of peer pressured and you'd be stuck with it, but you'd still have incredible opportunities through high school, even if you're special needs, because it was an amazing school. You'd be able to do a lot of scholastic stuff, but my social life, but eh. and then Vista, it's like, there may not be as much scholastic stuff, but still there's a lot of more extracurriculars than my high school and the social life is better, but it's different, you know what I mean? And I'm doing different activities at my school now than my school in the past. So it's a little bit different in both schools, you know? And and advocating for myself to do different things or different when you have like a mix of normal and special needs versus just special needs, you know? So I started with public school and now I'm in private school. So it's a completely different, you know what I mean? Right. And that's something we hear a lot from our other self-advocates is that high school and college can be really tough times, especially for social socialization, but that's why advocating for yourself and hopefully initiatives like Megan and I have help inform the community to be more accepting and aware of people with differences. Yeah. Except I haven't been to college yet. This is just a special needs like school that's like a vocational school. Mm -hmm. It's not a college because they don't study academics here. You know what I mean? But I'm hoping to go to college and study academics. I mean, there's students here that take online courses, the students who are who visit community colleges, but I don't. But I would like to eventually be a full time student of college after I graduate FISTA maybe take some part-time courses after um part-time courses after like vistas over like remedially like what i mean so i'd like to take like remedial part-time during vista and then graduate full-time 
and do full-time college after I graduate this. So it sounds like the program that you're in is more of a vocational transition program. So you've already graduated from high school and now you're in this program before hopefully going on to college. Is that correct? Yes. Got it. Yeah, that's a really awesome growth journey too, so that you can dip your toes in some of those other skills and things before entering the, the college career too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So speaking of different types of courses and training, I saw that you posted on your Instagram that you completed the Special Olympics Protective Behaviors online training. Yes, I did. Could you tell us a little bit more about that and what you've learned through the process? Well, I was like studying for soccer. I didn't do it for both soccer and floor hockey. I was hoping to do both as a volunteer, but I only did the soccer one because that was mainly the one I was focused on. So I learned like what I already knew. It was pretty much easy. It's like, it was like codes of contact, conduct not to be an athlete. And then it was like, do you know, do you, how do you, give the ball to someone you pass it that's what I was asking simple questions like that do you touch people no that's a penalty or it's like um and then it would ask like different CPR first aid stuff such as like um simple stuff like do you need a band-aid or um in this certain sense or or gauze or um like how do you and then the Heimlich maneuver thing, answering like the basic questions, you know what I mean? Not an actual demonstration, just basic questions, like, so you know what you're doing before you get the training, you know what I mean? And then it was like, um, also other ones such as, who do you go for the meds? And it's a shift supervisor. I knew that because my transition program has a supervisor, so I don't, I wouldn't want to do that. And then it says, do you, want to be a driver a person who drives people I said no because I don't have a license <laughs> yeah it sounds like those are some really important questions to start thinking about now especially as you hope to get more involved in these organizations and volunteer yeah. people yeah and I like got the questions correct and I figured that out you know it took me a few times to do the test right I got it on the third time <laughs> Hey, third time's a charm. The charm, right? <laughs> yeah. So, Margaret, if you could share one inspiring message about autism for our viewers to hear and learn from or remember from this conversation, what would you share? Well, what I would share is, um, believe it or not, is that the MAO people get like bunches of um, scholarships. So I was eight. I wasn't able to yet, but I will be offered them at the Miss Connecticut program. And I didn't believe that I'd be able to do that and stuff. And I um, am going to be ushering for my school's play. I'm doing Rotorect and I'm like involved with a lot. The Miss America organization giving me opportunities such as to um, do this autism nonprofit with a Virginia contestant that she's inviting me to. It's like, if you set your mind to anything, you can do it despite your autism. I don't know. I never expected to do a pageant before. I never expected that I'd be getting A's on my transition program meds after failing and sleeping in too much. I mean, you can go after your dreams, of course. You just got to work hard at it. I was on honor roll in high school. I, I did a lot in my life. It may not be easy, but you like, you can go after what you want basically despite your autism you can just go after it I mean you should go after what you want don't let anything hold you back from what you want just go for it you know absolutely and I'd, I'd love to congratulate you Margaret and share that it's because of your autism that you're valuable and that you have a place on the Miss America stage we need more people of diversity of different disabilities to be represented on the stage of different cultural backgrounds to be represented at Miss America because Miss yeah. America is all of these different people. It's not just- I also have a learning math disability. I have dyscalculia or dyscalculia. How do you pronounce it? I don't know. I have that, you know, and I also have hypotonia, which is like a physical disability and hip dysplasia, but I've pushed through that. I have a lot of disabilities actually. And I also, um, 
am bisexual. I know it sounds weird, but my first crush on a person was a girl, and that's how I found out that I was bisexual. <laughs> well, congratulations for staying true to who you are, and we're just so excited to cheer you on on your journey to Miss Connecticut. We're really looking forward to seeing everything you accomplish. Yeah. So I like, well, I like girls and guys, and I'm autistic. I don't know. It's kind of common to be bisexual and autistic. I know it sounds weird. It's common, you know? No, these right. are the perspectives we love to hear. We love to learn more about who you are and what makes you who you are. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Great. So we're wrapping up today for this conversation. Do you have any projects or events planned in the upcoming months that you're excited to share about? Hmm. Well, like I was saying earlier, there's this um, Miss um, Virginia contestant that's wanting me to um, volunteer with her nonprofit. She wants me to be a um, ambassador for her program through my campus, actually, you know, um, different, separate from my student ambassador train. That's different. That's my school stuff. But like, anyway, she has a program that I could represent and help a clothing drive with. And I'm going to help that Miss Virginia contestant with that. And it's an organization for autism. And also I'm being part of Rotorec Club that I got selected for through my school. So I'm doing those soon. I don't know when though exactly, you know. Mm -hmm. And you have the opportunity of winning scholarships at Miss Connecticut, which is happening April. I don't, I'm not exactly sure the date of that. 9th or 11th. 9th or 11th. So thank you so much for sharing your time and experiences with us on Spectrum Sundays. We are so excited to continue following your journey as a disability Thanks. advocate. And we wish you the best of luck as you compete for Miss Connecticut 2021. Please make okay. sure to follow her on Instagram at Margaret Carpen Carpenter D2 and Twitter Margaret Carp D2. See you next Sunday. Bye. Thank you for listening to Spectrum Sundays. We are your hosts, Miss Central Pennsylvania, Megan Sinisi. And Miss Thousand Islands, Francesca D'Alessandro. Please make sure to subscribe to our series and follow us on social media to stay connected to autism professionals and self-advocates. And just remember, true impact is accomplished through active listening and exploring the world through a variety of perspectives. Join us next week on Spectrum Sundays to help cultivate a community of inclusion, appreciation, and acceptance around autism.